Hello YouTube, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to another Movies with Numbers in the title, and we conclude, so far, the trilogy of Men in Black films with the third one in the franchise that came out many years later. This was ten years after Part 2, and that is Men in Black 3. On Blu-ray, the best Men in Black yet. Well, it is better than the second one. I could say that it's slightly better than the second one in some ways. In some ways, I think it's kind of iffy with the casting. I'll, I'll get to that. But this movie was a lot of fun. I was very, very skeptical when it came out. I'm like, oh, it's been 10 years since the last one. It's probably not going to be as funny. Uh, Will Smith and, and Tom Lee Jones hadn't done a film together in a long time. I mean, Will Smith had taken a hiatus from Hollywood by 2008. He was gone for four years and didn't act in anything until this. And it came back strong. This was a good third movie. I know a lot of critics thought it was disappointing. I thought it was really funny. Will Smith and Tom Lee Jones had great chemistry once again. That's been in all three films. Uh, this Once again, all just like all three of these movies have fantastic visual effects and practical makeup and really good, you know, uh, creature designs and everything else. You know, mostly it looks really good. And, you know, the spaceships and the, and the explosions and the, the guns that they use and, the, you know, the everything that they do in 1969 when they show that. But I'll get to that. It's all really well done stuff because... The director it came back to do all three films, so he did a good job with that. Um, also, uh, Josh Brolin as the younger version of Kay in 1969, where Kay pretty uh, Jay is pretty much uh, you know trying to find out about this villain that is going to kill Kay's character in the pe in the past, so that he doesn't exist in the future. And it's a good premise. I mean, he goes they do time travel like they do in Back to the Future Part One, Two, and Three, basically, you know. And uh, K, uh, Jay has to go by himself, and he travels to this uh, this guy uh, this with a beard, gives him a device that makes him go back in time. He has to jump off a building, and he's like, <laughs> and then he goes right into, and it's 1969. It looks really good, considering that it's 2012 when they filmed this, or 2011. T take your pick. And him and Josh Brolin have a good rapport. Like, Josh Brolin sounds just like a young Tommy Lee Jones. He looks like Tommy Lee Jones, like 30 years younger, and... He, he was really good, and the fact that we have him playing Thanos, and uh, and he's in Deadpool 2 as Cable, that's going to be awesome. It's going to be the year of Brolin next year, I guarantee it. He has his father's uh, acting talent for sure. Now, the negatives. There are problems with this movie. I had more problems. I had two major problems with this film compared to the first, uh, the first two. One is the guy that plays the villain. I'm sorry. A uh, freaking Jermaine Clement is one of the most annoying comedians from New Zealand I've ever met. No, he's not British. He has a British accent. This is my problem with this guy. His look doesn't bother me. He looks like Macho Man Randy Savage if he was an alien. The special effects on him, on his hand, where he has that thing coming out, shooting out, that that's fine. Uh, when he sees Nicole Schlesinger, the... The, the, the female you see in the beginning with the sexy outfit and he like licks her face. I'm like, hey, I would do the same thing to Nicole because, hey, she's a gorgeous woman of color. And I'm into that. Problems, the actor is trying way too hard to sound like Tim Curry. Why? He's like, I, my name is Boris. Yeah. I'm like, you're not Tim Curry, Jermaine Clement. I don't like you as an actor. You sucked in Rio. As the voice of the freaking cockatoo, you were, he was like, oh, no, he's not funny to me. He's just an annoying, generic villain. If it was Macho Man Randy Savage, if he hadn't died, I think he would have been a better villain. Just on nostalgia alone. Just, he's an annoying villain. There's a scene that these people are laughing and he's like, <laughs> no, that he annoyed me throughout the entire scene. Every scene he was in. There's a scene that he's talking to himself, his past self from the 1960s, and it's the worst scene in the entire movie. It's pointless. It's not funny. It just detracts from Will Smith and Tom Lee Jones and, of course, you know, um, Josh Brolin. And it's one of the worst scenes of a villain talking to himself. I hated it. I'd rather see the scene with Gollum in Lord of the Rings. That was fun, and that was well-written. This, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with this villain? Can't you write a good villain after 10 years of the second one? And you had sexy Laura Flynn Boyle, who I love as an actress. This guy, freaking Jermaine Clement, is annoying. He's just a, a cartoon. He's not funny. He's a, he's not threatening. He's just a, he's just a pussy. And uh, also, I don't like the, the actress that plays uh, the younger version of uh, Emma Thompson's character. 
Uh, I just, I'm not a fan. You guys don't know why. Alice Eve, not a fan of her. I don't think, her acting is not as good as Emma Thompson. She's a, a step down from freaking Rip Torn in the first two films. They just put it because it's the feminist movement. That's basically why they put women in this movie. Because of the feminist movement. And it's not needed. They're just characters that fill time. I think Josh Brolin and Will Smith are acting circles around her. And freaking Emma Thompson. Who's a good actress, but she's wasted here. She's in like three or four scenes. and uh, But the rest of the film is fine. There is a twist. There's going to be a spoiler here for the ending of the movie. Basically, K, uh, Jay, I keep mixing the two, Jay fights Boris at the top of a building or like like a sky, uh, I think it's the, is it? No, no, it's like the space where the space shuttle is going to go into space, the launch in 69. And um, uh, he has to like reverse time so he could stop Boris before he, uh, he could put that thing on top of the spaceship to save the world or for K to, you know, have enough time to stop the alien invasion from, you know, taking over the world. But then when you get to the end... K actually met Jay when he was a kid, and he saw his father die because Boris killed him, and uh, it's a very emotional moment, because I'm like, wow, they ended the franchise, or they at least ended the third movie with some heart. They added that K and Jay met each other when, you know, uh, uh, Jay was, you know, a little boy, and he said, where's my daddy? And, like, and Kay's like, your dad's fighting against, you know, he, he's doing the right thing, he's doing his job to keep your world safe. And it's a good, it's a heartfelt moment. That's a moment that I thought was missing in, um, not not really in the second one, but, you know, in, in like other films that I've seen, that they try to shoehorn in sap and it doesn't work. Here it works because the two actors, you know, the two characters have really good chemistry. Um, and also the, the, the character Griff, I know a lot of people said he was annoying. That guy was a godsend compared to freaking guys like Jesse Eisenberg and BVS because he was annoying, B, uh, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. He was annoying. He got on my nerves in every scene. Uh, the guy that plays Griff is a good actor. He's basically a seer. He can see things before they happen, and he has like a glowing ball on his head. He has a glowing sphere. It looked cool, and the actor's very subtle. He's not like, hey, hey, hey. he's not like waving keys in your fingers. I hate characters like that. I freaking hate them when they're just there to make noise. At least Griff or Griffin is a decent character. I don't hate him. He has a, like a coat and a hat, and I'm like, hey, he's a he's decent. I like the actor, so it, it helped a lot. Because if it was Jesse Eisenberg, I would have just fast forward because he annoyed the piss out of me in PVS. Any cut of that movie, he's annoying either way. I hope to God that Justice League is not in the film as much because I cannot stand when that actor does something like that. Good actor, but he's wasted on on, on a crappy character. But anyway, this is a good third movie. I had my skepticisms. I thought it was gonna suck. I thought it was gonna be an overhyped machine, but it had, it ended up being a good, a decent time. And I laughed. Got some really good effects. It was 107 minutes, I believe. Yeah, 106 minutes. So it's a little bit longer than the second one, and long around as the same running time as the first one. It's a little longer because, like I said, if you had cut out the freaking young version of uh, of whatever her name was, you know, Alice Eve, if you had cut her out or you, you got a better villain, I think the movie would have been shorter and more enjoyable because the villain just annoys the piss out of me. Like I said again, Jermaine Clement, you are not Tim Curry. You're never going to have that man's talent, ever. And I know he's British, but the guy can voice act, and he can act. He can be intimidating and creepy and funny, unlike you. With your <laughs> no, take that. I hate, I hate that freaking actor. I can't stand him. If he was ever in a Star Wars movie, the movie would be dead on sight. If they made him a villain in like episode 9 or or the freaking like a Boba Fett movie or something. Just He is so irritating. Cool looking character, but good God is he annoying. But anyway, it's a good third movie. If you want to see, see what the franchise went into a new direction, and I don't listen to critics because I saw a review of this last year from somebody on YouTube, and they said it's slightly better than the second one, but it's not as good as the first one. Nothing will be the first one. We all know that. But anyway, to, after the long time that we waited for this movie, it was worth it. It's a good, fun movie, really good effects, a good story. The time-traveling thing didn't bother me. Griff didn't bother me. It's just a villain in Alice Eve. If you took, cut them out, or you made Boris a intimidating villain that with an actor I buy... It would have been a lot better. It would have been one of the best sequels ever made. But hey, that's 
it's a third Men in Black film. I wasn't expecting Lord of the Rings Return of the King or Episode 3 or Guardians 2. There, I'm going to keep saying that. I know that's the second movie, but still. It's a sequel that came many years after, a couple years after the first one, and I loved it. This one, I don't love it, but I do like the film. The two, the, the three leads here serve a purpose. Will Smith is still funny. He still carries it. He's still wit. He's witty, just like in the first two films. He didn't lose that with four years' time off. And uh, Tom Lee Jones, when he's there, he's fun when he's there. And also, Josh Brolin is a scene-stealing younger version of K, and he's really good. And I can't wait for the year of Brolin in 20, 2018. Infinity War and freaking Deadpool 2. He's going to own the Marvel Cinematic Universe next year. Just, oh, I can't wait. The year of Brolin. I've, it's been too long. Because after Jonah Hex, he needed a boost. And this was definitely a step in the right direction. Because Jonah Hex was garbage. This was actually decent. And I like the film. It's very colorful. Good special effects. Good atmosphere. Funny jokes. Some jokes don't work here and there. But I really think that Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones and, and Josh Brolin, they bought their A-game. That's why the movie was a hit. It was the first hit after Avengers 1. Didn't top it, but it was still entertaining. And I'm glad I bought this for five bucks or five below. Good investment of my money. And screw the villain and screw Alice Eve, but the rest of it is it's entertaining. So I'm going to say that. Anyway, that's my review of Men in Black 3. It is, it's probably the best sequel that we're going to get because we're supposed to get like spinoffs in the seat and with 21 Jump Street. I don't know what's going to happen, but if they ever do a fourth one, please don't get an annoying villain again. I had enough of that last year and this year. With Mr. McSplicklick and Supergirl and Jesse Eisenberg's BVS the character and freaking the villains in The Flash. And, you know, I need some good villains. I need more ego and less enchantress. Just saying. But anyway, it's a good movie. Check it out. It's worth your time. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I have to sh shower and shave, and I'll be back doing another video tomorrow. See you guys next time.